Hello, I'm Jason, and I support Gen X Grown Up on Patreon. You should do the same, because the world just needs more GXG to make it a better place. Just go to genxgrownup.com slash Patreon to donate to the cause. No life, no fun! Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listener to this backtrack edition of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining me as always is George. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know that Moe's here with us. Hey, everybody. You know, a typical day of fun as a Gen X kid might mean exposure to dangerous conditions, devious contraptions, and life-threatening physics. <laughs> and yet, somehow, we survived to tell the tale. Of course, we're talking here about the average Gen X era playground. <laughs> They've changed dramatically in the last few decades. And in this backtrack, we're talking about playgrounds the way we remember them from our youth. The death-defying, yeah. life-spinning <laughs> centrifuges that they were, our yeah. wonderful Gen X playgrounds. Before we get into those dangerous topics, it's time for some fourth listener email, though. Our fourth listener this time around is longtime listener and Patreon supporter, Uno Clay. Hey, Uno Clay. Thanks for writing hey. in. Cool. Uh, he says... Hi there. Wanted to drop some feedback to the Blues Brothers episode. Oh, wow. All That's right. Going back a little bit. Yep. Two quick anecdotes. First, have you ever seen the Lego reenactment of the Blues Brothers mall chase scene? And I can say I had not. I had not I either. Now I looked it up. <laughs> I, I certainly haven't. Um, oh, really? Definitely yeah, want to look it up now that I know that it's a thing. It, it's yep. pretty cool. I didn't know about it either. So thank you for sharing it. <laughs> yep. But it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's from a while back. It's like 2013 or something. Yeah, you something said, like right? That. Yeah, yes. It's yeah. almost 10 years. Yeah, it's not like a modern animation like you would see in a Lego movie or something. It's clearly a fan driven thing. But man, is it accurate as hell. <laughs> it was a labor of love. <laughs> so it's stop yeah. motion with Lego minifigures? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep, exactly. Yep. Cool. Yep. And they built you the whole it. mall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says it's on YouTube and very worth a look. I would agree. It's very worth yes. a look. And I'll make sure to throw those links into the show notes so people can follow. Oh, perfect. It. Yep. So you can click on through and check it out. Uh, he says, secondly, my friends and I have been having a long running movie tournament over a decade now. Quite a tale in and of itself. But in any case, in one of the more recent bracket face offs, Blues Brothers needed to face off against the Naked Gun. Like hmm. to see which movie is better, I guess. Yeah, like, I think like, it's which yeah. better. Yeah. The okay. face offs or which one is better. So he says quite a match. 25 voters and the votes fell out 30. 13 to 12. Wow. Really? It favored the Blues Brothers. Yeah. It's so, okay. That's that's so closer I, than I thought. I, I don't see that as that big of a, like, the Naked Gun is, I mean, Frank Drebin is wonderful. Yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah, I agree. But it's no, it's no Blues Brothers. Come on. I, and you know me with my feeling about Blues Brothers. I'm probably going to go with Naked Gun in that Damn it, challenge. damn it, George. Yeah, Do know. not vote for the Naked Gun over <laughs> the Blues Brothers. Would. That's right, John, me and you vote together, so we're still two. Against All right, we would still one. win. Yeah. That's okay. We, we would still win. All right, we're still fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he said the losers of that particular matchup were sputtering in disbelief. <laughs> but in fairness, well, I'm sputtering that was that close. Yeah. But in fairness, both are utter classics. The vote was as close as it gets. Full disclosure, I myself voted for the Blues Brothers, as well you should have. Okay, cool. Uh, it's yes. okay to be wrong, Uno Kale. We don't mind. <laughs> no, you're correct in this case. This is a clear George's wrong scenario. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. It's, it's very it's not even subjective. It's clearly wrong. <laughs> it's objective, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no subjectivity in this whatsoever. No, no zero. No. None. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He wraps it up saying, anyway, <laughs> keep up the good work. I love the show. Fourth listener, Uno Clay, a.k.a. the guy in the Stay Puffed Marshmallow suit. Yeah. Ah. From our fourth anniversary yep, YouTube right. video that we did. Yep. Yeah, that was Uno Clay who was stomping through the city and <laughs> telling us that he loved the show. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Uno Clay. We appreciate you writing in. And you could tell your friends that are in the long running movie tournament that 12 of them were full of shit, apparently. <laughs> Billy the Blues Brothers. Was. What, one could vote for Blues? Brothers, and that would be okay. Is that what you're saying? Because the no, other 13 12, 12 Blues Brother Brothers are full of crap. There were 12 voted for the Naked Gun. They were full of shit. So. I'm not agreeing with that, though. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So George is the one vote. Okay, you can have it. We'll give it to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you you All right. Uno Clay, thanks for writing us, contacting us over on Patreon. We appreciate your support. If you would like your email feature here on the show, it's easy. You can contact us on Patreon if you're a member. That would be awesome. Or hit us up on our email address, podcast at genxgrownup.com. Read every single one, and most of them, just like Uno Clay's, make the show. All right. With that good business behind us, it is time to head down to the Gen X era playground. Talk to you right after the break. Stick around. ABC Wednesdays. Celebrity Jeopardy is back. Dang it! 
you. Look at it. Hosted by me, Ken Jennings. Yeah. <laughs> a new season of powerhouse celebrities compete. Go big or go home. To win one million dollars for charity. When celebrities take the Jeopardy stage, anything can happen. Bet it all. What is zombie? What is Arctic? What is the incorrect answer to this question? <laughs> Celebrity Jeopardy in primetime. Wednesdays on ABC and stream on Hulu. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show too. It helps more than you know. More than 200,000 children under the age of 14 are treated in hospital emergency rooms each year for playground related injuries. That's one every two and a half minutes. Most injuries occur when children fall from equipment onto the ground. Others involve impact by swings and other moving equipment and contact with protrusions, pinch points, sharp edges, hot surfaces, and playground debris. Whenever we do these podcasts, I know we try to do like some due diligence and look at some history. And I was thinking, like, is there freaking history for a playground? I mean, really? I mean, it's just a seesaw in the dirt, right? What's the history? (laughs) Right. I mean, (laughs) but actually, there is. There's history. There's a lot of history, actually. Well, I mean, obviously, there's history. It's in the past, but. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, like for the modern, what we consider like the modern playground. You mean there's like documentable evidence or yes. something of that? Okay. Oh. Right. That they right. basically didn't really exist until like the turn of the century. I guess they just sent kids into fields normally. Like until the 1900s, <laughs> you mean? Or the turn of this century? Oh, I'm sorry. Turn of the previous century. Good point. Okay. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh, oh, you forgot um, how old we were. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that was a stark <laughs> reminder. Thank you, George. Um, so 100 years ago, plus, they some the weirdest freaking facts are like the first swing they ever found was like from 1450 bc and you know it is this crazy stuff 1450 bc yeah BC? they actually found a swing wow. what do you find a fossilized swing right like was Apparently. it still attached to the tree and just the dirt piled up around it how did they know it was Yo, a swing i did dig deeper into that <laughs> it's like a tire frozen in amber what do you got what you find <laughs> a, a, a tire before i don't think it had tires, tires back then <laughs> right exactly <laughs> it was it was the Fred Flintstone stone, <laughs> stone tire. tire. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. With vines. So what we think of as a playground, though, is like an organized area with set activities built into it, like set equipment and things like that. Sure. That's what they consider the modern playground. Not just okay. go out in the field and entertain yourself. Exactly. Like so do you know there. when okay. the first one of those things was? Like, did they give you a year or anything? Or? Well, they said the first one in the United States, which is, hey, go USA, was actually in 1821 in Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, no, that was just the witch trials. Oh, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. Well, the kids need some place to play while the while That's not a swing. People. That's a noose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> while the adults were busy, the kids need some Go entertain yourself. We're burning people. It was like a Renaissance fair during (laughs) right after the Renaissance. (laughs) Again, like trying to find like solid history in some of these things is kind of, I'm sure, very touchy. And I'm sure there's a lot of controversy on this stuff. But they said like the first city official, like city sponsored playground was in Chicago in 1876. The city itself like built one. You know, that doesn't surprise me because I always hear about old stuff like World's Fairs happening in Chicago Mm -hmm. and this Mm -hmm. happening in Chicago. And the first of that, it seems like Chicago has a lot of firsts. I've never been kind there. Kind of an epicenter but... for innovation almost, aren't they? Yeah. It yeah, feels yeah. that way. Good on you, Beantown. <laughs> <laughs> That's Boston. What the fuck? <laughs> but the big bean is in Chicago, so I call that bean town. Oh, no, the big silver bean big is in bean? Detroit. Yes. What? No, no, no. It was Uh-oh. no, yeah. no. Oh, oh, fake fourth no. listener. Write in on this one because I have no <laughs> I'm idea. I'm telling you, I've <laughs> seen it in a movie that one of my friends was in. Yes, but I've been to it in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's you two got guys. Your Maybe there's mixed two. Up. <laughs> my airport's mixed up. <laughs> I mean, John, you did travel a lot. No, tell us more about playgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> this is going off the rails. <laughs> All right. So Just, let's, let's as we enter hour three of the history of playgrounds. <laughs> All right, let's get through this because it's not like the most exciting part of the show. But anyway, they, so in 1906, they actually, that was the Playground Association of America was formed, which they was trying really? to promote. Yeah, it was formed with the idea that kids needed to socialize and they needed mm-hmm. to be physical. They needed to be outside. I mean, so All pretty, good. actually pretty good so stuff. So 1900s kids were fat and lazy, just like our kids are now. <laughs> Well, not as. Yeah, I think they're all just working. <laughs> oh, okay. it's child labor. We need to give yeah, them a playground. Exactly. You're going to blow off steam after your, your 12-hour factory exactly. shift. 
<laughs> and they said they need a place for kids to actually be kids. It was actually part of the when the principles, which I like. That's awesome. pretty future. Yeah, I, I can see that because back then, I I know there were a lot of instances where, like, when you turn ten or eleven yeah, years old, it, man, you, you were going to factory in the mines, life. right? <laughs> they, like, it wasn't even a school thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really. Then you got to like depression hit, so not much was not many people were playing back then. And then like they basically just progressed over time. Like you had the novelty playgrounds and stuff during the fifties to the seventies, you know, the ones with the spaceships and the all those kinds of things. Oh, I wonder what you meant by novelty. So yeah, spaceshipy things, like themed ones or like exactly. a circus theme one or something. Oh, yeah. okay. That sounds like the sixties. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound like the 60s. Well, I want to know about <laughs> the ultimate playground then. When did the McDonald's ones happen? Is that really a playground? I don't know. Well, the play place, right? We're talking about the yeah. play place. Yeah, which I was mean, well, they have swing. Well, not swings, they have slides. Yeah. Slides, the I've the crawly been to through some things. when I was a kid that had seesaws and had those little hamburglar on a giant spring that you would rock back and forth on. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So FYI, I did a quick search. Turns out the first play place with that crawl true tube design, yeah, yeah. the ball pits and all that. Didn't come around until 87. Wow. Huh. Yeah. So George was in high school when he did all that? Yeah. But- <laughs> yeah, he would have been. Yeah. But no, there were playground, McDonald's playgrounds before that. Maybe play place is Yeah, the, the one we think of with thing. the yeah, the colorful tubes and stuff. Right. But it just, yeah. anywhere kids are going to be, I remember the play place was a big deal because that was a draw to McDonald's. Mm-hmm. But even before the Happy Meal, you had the playgrounds, right? You're like, oh, you want to go, you can screw around on the seesaws or whatever they've got. You know Andy what it is? I think the play places are the indoor ones. Maybe so. Possibly. Because Maybe the it. outdoor ones, yeah. remember they had the big Mayor McCheese thing. And I know I saw this oh, on one of those Rick's Restoration mm-hmm. TV shows it, yeah. where you could climb up into it and like his mouth was a jail or something. Yeah. Yep, Whoa. Yep. Well, it was a jail so you didn't jump out his mouth and fall from right. that height. Is what it was like <laughs> exactly. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But then like when you get to like the 70s, 80s, that's when the whole plastic stuff started coming in slowly over time. You know, they started putting like the plastic, so get more standardized. And then uh, in the 80s, of course, everything had to be super safe. And, you know, you, know, you had to have like five inches well, of that didn't happen in the, It happened just after the 80s. I mean, we're talking about the 70s and 80s when it wasn't that super safe yeah. kind of thing still. You know, maybe late 80s, they were late starting 80s. to tighten I think up late a bit. 80s, yeah. they started, you know, yeah. people started being concerned about stuff, but we'll get into it later. Well, George, you're the baby. When did you stop going to the playground? <laughs> <laughs> I just got back. Um, just got back to the playground. <laughs> I mean, the police told me I had to leave, but, you know. <laughs> sir, sir. Other sir. Other <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I think what you're talking about with the modern and the plastic and all that stuff. Yeah. I would bet that a lot of that has to do with big corporations starting to manufacture those things and oh, yeah. send them out. And, you know, people could order the same thing. Oh, I saw this in this playground and yep. order 12 mm-hmm. units for our yeah. city and that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, for sure. For sure. Right. It's, it's not just an industrial jungle gym that my, my cousin down at the steel mill put together. Right. It's like, <laughs> oh, right, because <laughs> with sharp and I'm sure we'll get rust. into that. But <laughs> I specifically remember monkey bars being widely different depending upon which playground I was at as a kid. Absolutely. Of course. Yep. They started out much more dangerous. In fact, they, <laughs> yeah. looking back, preparing for this episode, I found stuff from like the 40s and 50s was like, oh my God, how how did my great grandparents live through that? <laughs> there were like 20 foot tall jungle gyms and crap. Like, well, seriously. They did yeah, go I through know. World War II. So, yeah. <laughs> they, they were no snowflakes. They could handle it, I guess. They were badasses compared to yeah, us. Yeah, they were tough. <laughs> oh, he fell and broke his arm. Just get up, walk it off. <laughs> you got a factory shift to get to, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, that's right. Let's go. That's <laughs> right. Our shift Playground to the after the fact. <laughs> not before. <laughs> the history is not deep, obviously, but they just evolved over time, basically, is what it comes down to. I think they started mm-hmm. in the early 1900s, and then they started becoming more popular. They started becoming like part of public spaces, especially in cities um, where they didn't have a lot of green space. You know, They started creating playgrounds, that kind of thing. Good, yeah. It's interesting yeah. to note, though, that they had that organization start that early. 1906, yeah, I, was I think you said, or something? Yeah, 1906. That's kind of cool, because I never knew there was a thing, and it mm. makes me wonder now, if any of of the crappy playgrounds I played on were a part of that organization. Like, was there a oh, the rating system or yeah. did you have to meet a certain standard or something to join? They threw like ski slopes, like, oh, that's the black diamond playground <laughs> <laughs> or the blue playground. Or the, right. Yeah, there's an inspection sticker. Oh, this was an F. Sorry, this playground didn't pass the inspection. You can't go there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this one inspected by the commissioner of agriculture of Florida. Right. Or whatever. <laughs> Frank said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Critics are calling the creator a masterpiece. Joshua, take care of her. I promise. It's the best film of the year. Phenomenal. 
The best sci-fi film in ages. They're coming to get me. I'm getting you out of this. The creator is breathtaking in scale and vision. It's mesmerizing, visually stunning. See this film on the biggest screen possible. The creator, rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. Now playing only in theaters. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. Some items you want to be looking for include the depth of loose fill surfacing material, the cleanliness of rubber mat surfaces or poured in place surfaces, glass, can lids, sharp rocks, metal, and other trash. Check equipment hardware for broken, loose, worn, or missing parts. There should be smooth corners and no edges or sharp points on playground equipment. Now, of course, we're focusing in this backtrack on the playgrounds that we had as kids growing up in like the 70s and early 80s, right? Yeah. And they're dramatically different than the mm. playgrounds we oh, have yeah. today, especially. Now, we're going to talk later in the show about the specific <laughs> crazy <laughs> gear and equipment that we saw on the playground. <laughs> but generally here, I want to talk a little bit about why are they so different now than they were when we were kids? It's perceived as being weirder or more dangerous or whatever, but why is it so much different? What happened? I think we kind of know, but I want to touch on those. Lost suits yeah, there, there's a big yeah, one right let's start there lawsuits. let's start right there yeah that's the only thing that drives real change is money and lawsuits <laughs> yeah i mean I, I definitely agree i think that's a big part i'm sure somebody got sued and they're like oh we can't have that anymore and they they probably ripped that river dangerous that's equipment. why all the cool things go away that's yeah, exactly. why i can't go buy jarts anymore the yard darts, exactly because somebody <laughs> right? somebody did it yeah i mean well and it even you know we're talking about playing here and on playgrounds in specific but i remember when i was younger and i was you you know, heavily into sports and baseball and in mm -hmm. particular. And here in Florida, we know super hot all the damn time, right? Yep. And when you're playing sports, especially in Florida, in any time that's not December, it's summer. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. I remember kids dying during practices Whoa. and making news media. And as soon as that happened, rules started going into place about how long you could practice. Oh, and right. mm -hmm. if certain things happened, you, you couldn't and... practice anymore. And now today, like my kid just graduated high school a couple of years ago when he would play football. If a lightning strike hit within a five mile radius, everything was shut down. That's I was like, what yeah. the I remember playing in a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Take a salt tablet. You'll be fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, walk it off. <laughs> walk it off. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm sure, George, you're right that yeah. lawsuit liability lawsuits yeah. are the mm -hmm. reason that the majority of the change happened. But that doesn't mean it's bad necessarily. The frivolous lawsuits are things that we roll our eyes at. But you could say making it safer for kids, it's hard to be upset with that. We'll get into a bit later that maybe we lost some of the adventure <laughs> and fun. <Yeah. laughs> I'm almost kind of with Mo there. I'm like, no, let these guys go through the same danger we did. <laughs> yeah. It prepares them for a different world, man. <laughs> it's social Darwinism. Anyway, but the other thing I thought was really different is that I remember as a kid, like almost everything was steel. Oh, good point. Yeah. It was probably yeah. the cheapest way of making them oh, back yeah. then because the plastics really weren't that important. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. Especially in that large quantity you would need to make some of yeah. the equipment, right? Mm -hmm. And they yeah. want something durable that will last, you know, make some out of steel, man. It'll be there for a while. <laughs> you were just talking a second ago, George, about, you know, old mass manufacturing and the plastic. Mm -hmm. But another benefit of that is, of course, you know, if your head hits it, it might give before your head does, I guess. <laughs> so that's a, back that down a little bit. Well, in yeah. Even not just that kind of injury. Again, we live in Florida. You grab onto some of those steel monkey bars, you were taking skin oh, yeah. with you depending on how hot it was that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the beginning of Kung Fu when he picks up the, the big <laughs> thing with his wrists? And it's like, <laughs> right? It's, it's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I know we have oh a lot of gosh. northern listeners because they talk about it in Discord, how horrible yeah. the snow is. Trust me, grab some damn metal monkey bars in Florida in June oh. and then come talk to me. Yeah. When you can walk the rice paper and grab the monkey bars, you are ready, <laughs> grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so and you had the the playground association mode that we yeah. talked about. You know, I'm sure they were instilling new safety standards to yeah, come I along. Imagine. That, sure. I mean, why would that company or the organization exist if not to better the playgrounds that exist out there? Yeah, so good point. Every time somebody gets hurt, they're going to evaluate it. They're going to go, "Hey, maybe that should be this, or maybe not so tall, or maybe maybe don't swing them so high, or whatever." Right? Those things. I happen. still wonder. I'm fascinated. I'm going to go look up that organization now because <laughs> that Mo brought up. I'm wondering how did they. 
monitor situations? How, How do you do regulate you those things? Know. Because yeah. FAA, they have money. I can't imagine a playground association <laughs> of America. It's probably one of these, like, I imagine it's more like guidelines. And if you meet the, you know, it, I don't think they, I would imagine. Like, I, I imagine true. that they have just enough money to put out a little pamphlet every exactly. year, that's like a Boy Scouts <laughs> type of thing that yeah, they send out. I'm with you on that. <laughs> To a mailing list. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It's like they get like get a, get a license to open a playground. Like all I need is a plot of land and a seesaw, and I have a playground. I bet you do now, though. Maybe you think so? Well, maybe I guess for liability. What well, you're talking about the differences between then and now? I bet you now you have to have oh, yeah. I bet you because a whole bunch of regulations now. Right. Well, well think about <laughs> it. Like during the early days of COVID, we saw YouTube videos all over the place where cities were closing down a playground for right. COVID safety and outraged parents. My tax dollars pay for this. I'm yeah. go, I don't care. And they get <laughs> drug off by a cop or something like that. So, you know, there's stuff out there now, but I don't remember anything like that from when I was a kid. No, 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 I certainly don't. Well, you talked about the steel versus plastic. Yeah. The other thing that I've noticed, uh, I live in a subdivision that just behind me, there is a soccer field that has a little playground on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And used to be, if you fell off of the monkey bars, you fell in maybe dirt or grass or quite yep. likely concrete or concrete. black top that was put yeah. down. You know, the same guys that put the road out in front of the playground <laughs> <and> <laughs> over the, the grass out there. But now, like, they have this chipped rubber stuff, like tires that they put oh, yeah, through yeah. a shredder. Yeah. And they'll, they'll have that poured rubber that you've seen in the play places mm -hmm. now, the kind of spongy stuff. or Yeah, like it feels like mats. a little like a gymnastics trampoline mat right. kind of a mm -hmm. thing. So yeah. it's like a technology yeah. improved that it can make these products now to help, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, if, it, if it's a little, if it's more likely to break before your skull, I suppose. <laughs> I see yeah, maybe yeah, why I you guess. would switch to that. One thing I thought about though is like, also, I mean, I remember, I mean, we're going to go into this later, but many, many times me and friends got hurt at playgrounds. Sure. All yeah. the time. <laughs> well, sometimes it was the point. Or wherever. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> stuff that, you know, it, it could have happened well, because- well, I'm going to pause you here, Mo. Uh -oh. Hold on. In George's youth- the point of going to the playground was to see who he could hit or hurt. I'm, I'm just saying there were games. I'm, I'm just saying that sometimes those games involved inflicting pain. I was a kid. So, was this after or before Lunchbox Gladiator? Was this, it might have been during. I'm during. Just, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mo. I just had no, to. No, no. You told, that was totally worth it. I had it. to explore that little dark corner of George's mind. Oh, go ahead. But I remember it's like, if you can't, like, if I fell or tripped or burned my hands or something, whatever. You went home. You guys like, what happened? You tell me like, okay, they fixed you up and they sent you back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, if I went home. Yeah. If you went home, right. <laughs> yeah, if you even went home, right. Rub dirt on it. <laughs> exactly. That'll make it better. I, if you had an open wound, rub dirt in it, clots it right up. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure none of it gets in your bloodstream. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> Whereas now you, know, you hear about these, you know, oh, my kid fell and they're going down there and they're oh, yeah. off yeah. the equipment that caused it and, you know, Oh my God. Yeah, I see where you're going. It, people are definitely, I mean, we, we have the more sensitive culture that we've talked about helicopter parenting, yeah. which actually yeah. we, we were kind of the helicopter parent somewhat, yeah. I guess, oh, yeah, yeah. in our age. Uh, but pe people are, they're very litigious. Mm -hmm. They're very quick to, who can I blame? Who can I sue? Uh, it feels like there's much more of that now. And so that's that, that circles back, George, to your lawsuit thing. Yeah. yeah. If people are more sensitive and more likely to be litigious, well, then you got to, look, we have taken every precaution possible. We've laid on the rubber mats instead of yeah. the asphalt. We made it plastic instead of steel. And yeah, it's so it's, my child is allergic to that type of rubber. You know, <laughs> I don't know how our podcast hasn't gotten sued by my opinions alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're approved by the American Podcast Association. <laughs> we got a pamphlet. Yeah, the the inspector pamphlet. just hasn't checked yet. We're going to get an F. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, th there's one more little thing that might play into it. And that was oddly enough, it, it was kind of picking up a little at the end of Gen X and that was that stranger danger thing. We, mm. I know as young kids, uh, we would just yeah. go play and mm -hmm. be gone, you know, and maybe hopefully you got home before the, the, the lights came on right. and if you didn't, right. you just got a good talking to, but right. there wasn't as much sensitivity about just how, da how much danger you're in. I think there's an inflated sense of how much danger you're actually in from playing on the playground or from 
from right. strangers coming around or whatever. You know, it, that changes that environment too. It absolutely does. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that we became more aware of as we got more input of from news like cable mm-hmm. channels and that expanded. That's right. So that started, my mother used to talk about it. She said, I never heard about kids getting abducted. And I said, well, it's not that it wasn't happening. There just right. weren't enough news channels and enough news broadcasts mm-hmm. to tell you about where it was all happening at that time. Yeah, now there's a yeah. hundred news channels and now they, the internet they, and everything else, but they've got to fill all the time. So if something happens, they, you know, yeah. you yeah. The, if it bleeds, it leads, right? I've, yeah, exactly. I've worked in media all my life. People talk about that. You know, that's not really the, the credo, but there's some <laughs> truth in it. The, the good things that happen don't make for good television. You want to hear about the outlier, the, the odd things that happen, the dangerous right. things that happen. That's, and so you hear about it. And so I, I think that also changed people's attitudes toward what, what they accept. Yeah. Well, and, and I think too, just even when it, we're talking specifically about playgrounds, one of the big changes that I noticed from when I was a kid versus when I started taking my kids to the playground were gates and fences. Mm. And that mm. probably relates yeah. directly to that fear of security because yeah. when I was a kid, I think maybe one of my playground places had a gate and that was because it was a basketball court and they didn't want people yeah. playing mm-hmm. on it and ruining like the rims wandering onto it yeah. or something. But mm. um, everything else, like all the regular that, you know, with the seesaws and swings and all that yeah, kind of playgrounds, right? they were just, they're just there in the middle of an area. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Good points. There are a lot of reasons why it has changed. I promised that we were going to talk about the actual gear that we oh, found yeah. so much fun that some of it's gone sadly today. <laughs> some of it, maybe <laughs> we're happy it's gone. We'll see. <laughs> we're going to run down some of that stuff right after this break. Stick around. Instacart helps you get beer and wine delivered in as fast as an hour. So, whether you need to fill the cooler for tailgate season or fill your glass for Pinot by the fire season, you can save time by getting fall sips delivered in just a few clicks. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Must be 21 or over for alcohol delivery where available. Instacart. Add life to cart. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. You don't have to be a trained inspector to help maintain a playground. Visually inspect your playground routinely for safety problems and unsafe equipment. If equipment is broken, report it to the person or department in charge of the area. Although there are no mandatory standards for playground equipment, some states have laws that require playgrounds to follow standards set by the American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM. Talking about the history and the differences is all fun, but if you're going to have a playground podcast, you damn well better talk about (laughs) the stuff that was in the playground (laughs) and talk about your experiences, that kind of stuff. One of the very first pieces of equipment, I'm going to call it equipment, but mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of stretching it a little bit. Even from a little bitty child, it's got to be the sandbox. That was the place to be when I was like a toddler. You know, you had your, mm, yeah, you mm-hmm. make your little hills and you had your little trucks and stuff yeah. that you would push around through there. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, maybe you might bury the kid that you just hit with a lunchbox, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that might They'll be just you. Body. <laughs> but those things, they were awesome when you're a kid, but now you're an adult. Yeah. You start thinking about what kind of stuff was really in that sandbox <laughs> <laughs> they don't have sandboxes anymore they got rid of them and for a good reason i understand really? why so they're all gone now well I mean, i'm sure there's piles of sand kids are going to play in sand but like as a centerpiece of the playground a pile of sand for people to you know play in they don't put those in there anymore huh. and i did the same thing you did george i had my hot wheels and i was digging oh, yeah. tunnels and stuff making roads and stuff right tracks and yeah. Stuff. yeah yeah studies have said that there are sandboxes have two thousand times more bacteria Bacteria, yeast, and mold per square inch than the door handles of a public restroom. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> But you know, we survived okay. it though. Yeah, I know. I'm always, every time somebody gives me one of those statistics, what do they always mm-hmm. say? Then a public restroom. That's always the end line of that statistic. Right. Which maybe yeah. public restrooms are just really damn clean. <laughs> <laughs> and this stuff isn't as bad as we think. Well, it, I know that it's often a cat box when you're not around playing and the yeah. random cats are roaming, yeah. right? Every kid has peed his pants at one point in the in the sandbox, probably, and just sat there and went, ah, rub sand on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rub some fixes dirt on everything. It. But yeah, I, I never thought about it. It wasn't until later when somebody, you know, talking about how filthy they are. I'm like, 
like, what do you mean filthy? I was there playing all the time. It's like, oh no, you have no idea. They just ditched those and I know that you guys have a lot of stuff. I just got one other one and it kind of relates to the same box because it was like the next step up when I was a little bit older. Do you okay. guys remember the box hockey boxes? No. Box Where are hockey. Those? So Not by name. What I'll is describe it? them. Okay. They have two squares that are attached and in between the two squares, there's like a middle piece of wood that's almost think of it like a net on a tennis court. Okay. 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 In that piece of wood, and this is very low, like the structure is no taller than maybe a kid's the midpoint of his shin. Okay. okay. But in that piece of wood that's in the middle, there are two or three holes cut. Okay. And then on the back pieces of wood behind each kid, because there's one kid in each box, there's another hole that would be representative of the goal. And you would have these little rubber balls and essentially a hmm. hockey stick type of thing. And you would smack the ball through that hole in the net in the middle. And then you would try and swat it through the goal of the kid on the other side. Wow. That's incredibly organized. Yeah. For really? that I, 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 I've never seen those. <laughs> we yeah. had those. I loved playing that game. That was a, another great stick game where you could smack somebody in the shins. <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> now I see why George played that. I yeah, did. I understand. And claim it was accident. my next sandbox without the sand. No, oh, okay. Yeah. One that comes to mind that I think I remember seeing, but not a lot, and they're totally gone now. Do you remember the Barrel of Fun? It was called that effectively on, on a bar that's mounted maybe a foot above the ground. They have that kind of like a big round barrel that spins in the middle. Like it, it's like, like imagine you're walking on a log in the water and like you're trying to stay oh, up on it. Right, right, right. And so it's kind of like walking a log inside of water. And so it spins free on the bar oh so it's yeah, horizontal it's yes. horizontal when yes, you say exactly. barrel Numbered. I'm thinking of like I'm thinking of standing for a second yeah yeah like yep. something that they jumped in in Lord of the Rings you know um, gotcha yeah. no no yeah it's, it's horizontal on this bar yeah and you're trying to like stay on it but you can also just grip it and just swing around to the bottom and <laughs> clunk your head on the ground or try to make it underneath and it's like a log yeah, roll yeah. like you said right yeah it's like a log roll it is yeah, yeah I remember though and again you don't see those anymore anything that's damn fun is gone <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> just, they get rid of yeah. those. And you know, when it was like a standard at every playground that I thought was really boring was seesaws. I, I oh. don't think you were using them right. I guess not. I, <laughs> you go up now, and down. Now, and I'm, like, I'm finding with George on this one. If you're a big enough guy, seesaws are great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I was not a big guy. So, okay. Explain this so, to me. Oh, you and I would enjoy them, but I would enjoy them more than you did. Because <laughs> it's just, you got a board with a handle on each end and you just, right. you're, it's a teeter totter, right? right? Up right, and down. Yeah. And the weight of one yeah. kid lifts the other kid. And if you're both about the same weight, it's really cool because it's kind of like a semi weightless at the bottom, but you, you kick off the bottom and you first, the two things that are great you could do is you could really kick off and make the kid on the other end clunk his ass on the ground when it hit. <laughs> and then immediately after that, you come down hard and you fly him off the seesaw. <laughs> oh, I get it now. <laughs> sometimes on purpose. Sometimes it's just, again, it's to see, let's see if we can do this. Launch me, launch oh, yeah. me. It wasn't yeah, even like that. nefarious usually. It was like, let's do this cool thing. Sometimes <laughs> if you were big enough, you could just hold the kid up there and make him cry yep. oh, yeah. because he couldn't get down. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first introduction to business power dynamics as a kid. <laughs> that taught me see, life lessons. Look at that. <laughs> you see what kids they are missing out on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> business dynamics of the seesaw. Yeah. <laughs> Bestseller written by George. There you go. <laughs> Do you remember the... Um, <laughs> I, oh, I never liked these. Well, eh, I never played on them much, but I thought they were interesting. You have like a ride on animal, like a tiny one. Maybe it's like two foot long, but they mount it on this giant industrial one inch spring in the ground. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the thing I was talking about on the McDonald's yes. ones. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So at those things, you could lean on them left and right like you're riding a motorcycle or something, but kids can get their fingers in there and get them squished. They're like, yeah. That just teaches you, again, Don't business your dynamics. <laughs> Stay away from me riding on my big spring monster. Yeah. Do not put your fingers in because it's yeah, mine. Yeah, I, I think in the regular playgrounds, it was usually like a duck. <laughs> I remember a duck often being the character. Be a animals, duck, yeah. a turtle. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. remember a turtle. I don't remember turtles. Yeah, we had a turtle, which is weird because his back is concave like a saddle, but it was a turtle. Oh, uh, it was. Con- I was going to wonder. Yeah. I was like, that's got to be uncomfortable with the rounded turtle. No, show. it's like a turtle's head. No, it's a turtle's oh. head. And he had little tiny flippers in the back or something. But yeah, it was the giant spring. That's the problem. Like, yep. I get that they weren't fun, but when I was young enough, they were the free version of the ride in front of the grocery store. Oh, good point. That's right. Yeah, they were. You yep. have to put yep. a, a nickel in it. 
put the quarter in, but no. you had to do all the work. Yeah. That one was, it was George powered instead of electric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I still remember those being like two different levels. Either the spring was so strong, you couldn't do anything with it, or it was like yep. super loose. And it was basically, you just, you just, like, you just, you just, you just <laughs> get on it and lay over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, this is not great. <laughs> and the danger from the layover ones is that when you would slightly shift and it would come, uh, you would be unseated and would snap through. And if you were a guy, <laughs> there was some extra danger if you were a young male. That's all I'm going to yes. say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. I agree. Yep. I know what you're talking about. Well, it, swings are like that too, right? So yeah. not for the not for the rider, but for the idiots that aren't paying attention to the swing. Yeah. Oh, kick them. Yeah. Yeah. Which again, Darwinism, stay away from me swinging. <laughs> you don't stay away from my feet when I'm swinging, but they wander in front of there and smack and then you're both falling off this way. <laughs> Best yeah. activity on the swing is how high, high you can go and jump off without killing yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yep. 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 Right. Then there was the legend of the kid that could go all the way around. All the way around. <laughs> I've <laughs> seen YouTube videos of that kid lately. He doesn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> right. He gets to the apogee and then it doesn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> then he's going to go yeah. after that. <laughs> the, the system breaks down or gravity takes hold. Something. <laughs> the centrifuge, and it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't. But everyone knew a kid who knew a kid that did it. Though, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I saw him do it. <laughs> yeah. He was from Canada. Yeah, you, you guys don't know him. <laughs> you don't Canada. know him. <laughs> was, during my vacation, I met him. You don't know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say one of my favorites, though, had to be monkey bars. Oh, the best. Those are the best things. Yeah, absolutely. And different versions of monkey bars, too. Yeah. Like, there's the standard one that was like a straight line monkey bars, and you would get good to where you could really swing on it and Mm -hmm. skip the bars. And go every other. You got a rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. But then there were also those ones that I treated them like monkey bars, but they were the the half circle dome type of oh, thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah like like yeah. a big geodesic dome with yeah, no tiles. Yeah. It was just open. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Your feet were, could fall through because the holes were just big enough for your feet to fall through. Well, right? if, yeah. If you were on the outside <laughs> of them, sure. Yeah. But if you were on the inside, you were probably getting stepped on. Yeah, exactly. We played King of the Hill on that one, right? You get oh, to the yeah. top. Mm. There's a little place where you could sit and then come on, dethrone me. Get right. on up here, whatever you're after. And yeah. you're kicking kids that are coming <laughs> up and <laughs> other kids are bringing lunch boxes with them. <laughs> Hockey sticks. <laughs> that feels unfair. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, I talked about looking at some older ones, and some of them are like 20 feet tall back oh, in the yeah. 40s and 50s, which, yeah. and again, I won't say every kid survived it, but enough kids survived that we're still here, <laughs> right? Didn't get them all. See, I think of that, I'm like, man, that must have been cool. I'm thinking like a 20-foot one. Exactly. It's a great form of population control. As a kid, I want to go up the 20-foot monkey bar, right? Yeah. It's like, it's, stop making me not do it. That sounds right? like great yeah. fun. I know, I know I could fall, but if I don't, look how much fun I'm having, right. you know? The fall off of monkey bar was always the same for me because it would happen during the swing and I would swing too far forward and my fingers would give out and I was flat Mm -hmm. on my back smacking my head against the ground lungs air gone right you know (gasps) can't breathe can't breathe can't breathe (laughs) and then of course as a kid you're like give me a minute I'm going again (laughs) right (laughs) it's my turn You talk, George, about the fact that in Florida here, it's always, you know, it's either December or the dead of summer. Right. <laughs> the slides in Florida were a different kind of hell from slides anywhere oh. else. Let me say, even in New York in the summer, they were just as bad. I, I'm with you, though. Oh, you don't know shit, Mo, in New York. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. I, will, I, will, I will acknowledge that. I will acknowledge Maybe that. they're warm. I mean, it's the difference between firing a bullet and throwing it. It's a huge difference. Okay. It might have been hot. I'm talking blisters, searing your skin. You go up the ladder. It's probably a 10, 15 foot tall. You get up there. If you're lucky, it has a dome around the top so the kids don't knock each other off. But yeah. then it's just this like a 30 degree down stainless steel mirror that has right. been sucking up heat all day. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you got shorts on oh. and you get on that slide and you start your way down. And you get on, it's like, and it's half the sound of sliding and half the sound of frying your back of your legs. Oh my. And let's paint the picture a little bit more. It's the 1970s short shorts with the little yes. white stripe around right. them yeah. that cover nothing <laughs> except for the stuff you can get arrested for. Yep. <laughs> it's not just my legs. It's the, it's the bottom of my butt also right. yeah. getting cooked. <laughs> and I know s- multiple times, because I'm a very pale-skinned person, so this happened to me pretty much every time I would go down the slide. <laughs> I would go down the slide one time, Mo, yeah. and I would stand it up, and everybody would point you've got sunburn on the back of your legs or you burn it. And they would just be beat red. 
<laughs> automatically from one slide down of those that things. Adding mag- the magnification of the slide. <laughs> mm-hmm. You always yep. wanted to be like the third or fourth kid to go down the slide because the other ones had sucked up most of the heat by that point. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Or if you're lucky, you could, you could run water on it. Like you dump a soda down there oh, or something, yeah. try to cool it off. Or what do you think you'd do? We would always put sand on it because it was easier to go down <laughs> Again, just with rub bare some legs. dirt on it. Just yeah, dirt on it. That dirt. fixes <laughs> everything. <laughs> rub some dirt on it. You know, they used to have, talk about swings, they used to have real time tires as swings remember that like they genuinely had an old good year occasionally yeah. it wasn't a chain it all or the rope playgrounds on. but yeah no, i remember sometimes. that once in a while well they would do that with them or they take like those big tractor tires and they'd half bury them yes yeah and they would look like a loch ness monster like you could jump from hump yep. to hump and you could you know go between them mm-hmm. and they stopped doing that again safety garbage i guess but apparently <laughs> apparently real tires the way they have the little cubby holes in them it's a breeding ground for mold and insects in florida especially mosquitoes and it's dirtier than a public restroom <laughs> <laughs> at least a thousand times it might have been and, and then they're like oh sometimes the rubber might have dangerous chemicals for kids i mean look if you're eating the tire it's because you fell you're not trying to <laughs> yeah, you're you're actively eat eating tires you know <laughs> yeah. ah, whatever but i i think i remember those that that thing where the tires being buried in yep. the ground, the tractor tires. Mm-hmm. The one thing I remember from them, there was a couple of them that would be worn rather thin in one part or another to uh-huh. where there was the little metal fragment shaving. Oh, the fiberglass things yeah. coming out? Well, or, no, or, it was like real well, the metal. The belt in the tire. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. The metal belt, yeah. sure. And so you get scraped up pretty good Ooh, on those if you weren't yeah, careful. Those are hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go down on your knee on those steel belts, radi- radial uh, things. Uh, like, yep. It's like little razors inside the rubber. Yeah. Fun, kids. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Another one of the monkey bar styles. Remember, the, there was one called the witch's hat. It was kind of like a rocket, but it's like you take the dome and you make you take it to a point. It okay. looks like a big rocket. It flares out at the end. Huh. The thing about it's like being inside of an upside down ice cream cone, a pointed ice cream cone. Okay. So inside you could climb up the inside, but you're climbing. It's going backwards on you as you're trying like to make your way to the top. Yeah. And then a pole in the middle to slide down is what it would have. Oh, oh God. That no. sounds okay. pretty fun. Uh, part no? of your description was sound familiar and then the okay. pole i was like no i don't know like yeah. <laughs> yeah. did you ever have ball pits in any of your playgrounds i know no, it's a chucky e. cheese thing but yeah yeah chucky e. cheese first place i saw that yeah really yeah no, i've been to a public one when i was a kid i remember but it was all they closed like had nets all the way around it so you know people didn't the balls didn't go flying out but i think the less said about ball pits the better we all know how terrible <laughs> unsanitary <laughs> ball pits are honestly compared to sandboxes <laughs> you know to this day even as a kid i have never once been in a ball pit yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because when I finally saw one at Chuck E. Cheese, I was too big because they had the rules. You have to be super short Mm -hmm. to go in it. Yep. So I never got a chance. And I always wanted to because I always wanted to dive into the ball pit head first. Never got a chance. (laughs) Yeah. Your day will come. (laughs) (laughs) That sounded like a There we go. No, no. I'm just being being, being inspirational. (laughs) George, on your 60th birthday, we're getting you a bouncy house, a ball pit, and a bunch of combat lunch boxes. You can have a great day. That would absolutely be one of my favorite birthdays of all time. We gotta talk to his wife, John. We gotta plan, start planning now for we'll this. We'll work it out. Yeah, we yep. got some time. Yep. You know which equipment, whatever. I'm surprised I haven't seen someone die on was those merry-go-rounds. Do you remember those things? Now you're not talking yeah. about the ones at the basically they like just spin. The amusement park. You're talking oh, about not a carousel, smaller, not yeah. a carousel. I'm talking about like basically it was a spinning disc with metal bars on it. That eventually there's some big kid whose goal is to spin it as fast as humanly possible to get bodies to fly well, off. That's it. every kid's goal. That's the point of the merry. <laughs> go around did, did i miss the memo the point is how fast can we spin this thing and still stay on it i thought that's what i did well i was thinking like you know you got all these little kids and there's some teenager i remember would come up and be like oh you guys want to spin and then like next thing you know, you're like all like holding off with your life you know like oh my well, god I imagine in your city playgrounds that was a lot more dangerous because you probably had more of the tar and concrete surfaces yep, under we, yeah we did oh totally whereas here in florida for me it was more of the dirt and grass surface we were most concerned about being thrown into the sand spurs in yeah. my area. Yeah. Yeah. You, here you get some road rash, but it's all right. <laughs> I used to love those things. I always had a technique. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Share. There's, there's, a, well, I don't know if it was a good one. I just, it works. But <laughs> first, you start off as if you're the spinner, you start off running with it. That's, sure. that's your first to get the real momentum going. Okay. Then you finally get to a point where your legs can't go any faster. So you stop, you take a breath. Then you start reaching behind you as far as you can to grab the first bar and pull it as hard as you can as it comes around the arc. And sling it. And you just keep doing that and doing that and doing that until eventually your hand is not even fast enough. 
to speak. Right. And then <laughs> yep. you say, good luck, fellas, and you walk away. <laughs> yeah. Because whoever's on is not getting off. No. Oh, <laughs> not oh safely. they're getting off. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me. I, I was doing that, too. My problem is when I'm doing the grab and throw, I'd end up getting kicked by about four kids who are whipping <laughs> yeah. around because their legs are hanging out. You have to have the arm that's longer than their legs to make that yeah, work. Yeah, than their legs. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, it, and it's like this giant free public centrifuge and all the blood is pooling to one side of your face. It's, <laughs> and there's always like somebody who wants to stand right in the middle. Right. Because you know, they want to be like the maximum spin. But you know? what a wuss. You're not really spinning then. You're just kind of, you're like in the parade. You're just waving. You're like, oh, look at all these kids falling off. I'm in the middle. He wasn't in any danger. That kid. What a wuss. That kid. Oh, hey, that kid. Were you that kid, Mo? Were you the no, punk in the a, middle? I hate okay. that. I hate Mary Go Rounds, man. I just got nauseous every time I was on those things. That's why I was wondering, like, how many, it was a badge of honor for us, like, how many kids you could get to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I got two. I got two to throw up today. I only got one, but you know, it's only three o'clock. I got time. <laughs> I still got time. <laughs> Parents haven't come to pick us up yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised there weren't more injuries, quite honestly. Or maybe there were. We just didn't care. I don't we're know. just yeah. tougher kids. Put a little dirt on it. That's all yeah, you had put to do. Put a little dirt, dirt on it. On it. <laughs> I'm Allison Holland, host of the Kennedy Dynasty podcast. Equipped with a microphone and a long-term fascination of the Kennedy family, I am joined by an incredible cast of experts, friends, and guests to take you on a fun, relaxed, yet informative journey through history and pop culture. From book references to fashion to philanthropy to our modern expectations of the presidency itself, you'll see that there is so much more to Kennedy than just JFK or conspiracy theories. Join me for the Kennedy Dynasty podcast. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Sometimes equipment is used in unintended and unanticipated ways. On swings, make sure all S-hooks are closed and there are no worn bearing hangers. Check protective caps and plugs on equipment such as ladders and climbers. Check wooden equipment for splinters, large cracks, or deterioration. Make sure metal equipment and pieces haven't rusted or deteriorated. It's clear from some of the little pieces, nuggets of information about merry-go-round <laughs> technique and witches' hats and <laughs> how the springy animals work and stuff. We clearly all have memorable experiences from playgrounds. So in this segment, what I want to do is I want to do kind of around the table. I want to go to each of you and tell me what is your most memorable thing, either like a story or a memory or uh, working <laughs> oh, with God. enjoying playgrounds as a kid growing up at Gen X. Mo, let's start with you. Okay. I won't say enjoy, but I'll say memorable. How about that? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> setting expectations oh, right yeah, away. Setting expectations. Now. So my uh, elementary school had one of those the metal monkey bars, where it's like basically metal pipes connected yeah. to each other. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And it was pretty tall, and, and you know there were squares, but they had some that were like open that you could like run through, like doorways, kind of ah. like through the monkey oh, okay. bars, kind of thing. Yeah, like they, they had gaps where they aren't yeah, all barred up. Right. Exactly. So I remember as a kid, you know, we played tag on them and all that stuff, and I, we cruised through all those like nothing. Went home for summer, came back, and we're playing tag, running through. And oh, no. Apparently, I had a big growth spurt that summer. <laughs> oh. And my head hit the bar so hard. <laughs> the teacher across the way heard the clang. <laughs> and it's the only time in my life that I seen stars. I, oh, wow. I was laid out flat on my back. <laughs> oh, I wow. had no idea what was going on. What happened? Grade two concussion. I mean, yeah, I mean, because I was like, I've been at school for like a couple of years. Just ran through it, no problems, right? <laughs> this worked fine last time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Move, move this. <laughs> what the hell happened? The funny thing is that with that, I didn't even go home that day. They sent me to the nurse's office. Yeah, I sat there for a few minutes. I went back to class. Lay down and have a popsicle. Shut the hell up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the teacher was sitting there. She's like, I heard the clang all the way across from the page. <laughs> she came running over. Oh, my God. I had this huge knot across my forehead. And I was oh, like, I can imagine. I got home. They didn't even call my parents. I got home. My mom looks at my head and asks me what happened. And I explain it to her. And she just shakes her head. How sad are mm -mm. you now, Mo, that that's now a professional sport that you can get paid at that you missed out on because it didn't I happen know, exactly. soon enough? 
<laughs> so I will remember that forever. You know, I won't remember my kids' names at some point, but I'll remember that story. Yeah, because of the head injury. <laughs> That's exactly. why. <laughs> but, Something is damaged. It has a half-life. Those, those brain cells are wearing out. <laughs> so that's like, how about you, John? What do you got? <laughs> well, I don't know if the mind's going to stand up to clanking your own damn head on that monkey bar thing. <laughs> we should have had Mogo last. We should, I think. Apparently, <laughs> right. It's all downhill from here. Uh, no, I, mine is just really a kind of general memory. Maybe, maybe I clanked my head and forgot the rest. <laughs> you know, for a time, we, we lived in a trailer park for a few years on a couple of lots. And the nice thing is you had access to all the amenities. Like, so we had a big public pool and we had oh, okay, like yeah. a shop there with a little store and they had board games and stuff you could play and and they had right next to the pool a giant playground they didn't have tons Mm. of equipment but man did they have looking back now so sad they had a huge sand pit that we (laughs) love playing in and you know it's funny that you mentioned that at the beginning george because i'm like he's talking about the same thing that i did we had specific matchbox cars that were for playing in the sand because the sand all got in the wheels and it cranked them up but we weren't just fiddling around in the sand like we had stories we would yeah the sand would be a little bit damp Mm -hmm. probably it's pee in there i don't know why how it got damp it was was enough that you could mold it into shapes and make little bridges and arches and stuff we drive our cars around kind of thing right and how big can we make the city and it was really and then he thinks you'd come back the next day and we'd always pretend oh like an earthquake happened we have to rebuild (laughs) the city yeah some of it's still there unless a kid came and knocked it all down and we could play it again but we had cars and we had an area where we would bury our cars so we didn't have to remember to bring them the next day we just had a (laughs) hidden spot where we dig up our cars each day let's play with them oh time to go home let's bury them in the hole and and get them done and put a rock on it or something but it was really around well, we played on the swings and the slides and all yeah, that yeah. stuff but it was that sand pit that was probably the most fun for me other kids coming and going and were like stay back we're building a civilization right in the sand <laughs> so, that was it and that's cool because it's like it i mean it's like social i mean you're dealing with you're working with other people you're yeah it was me and two friends that was it yep. yeah i mean it's just cool yep. neat George, how about you? Other than general combat and warfare, <laughs> <in particular. laughs> did you have a mass shoot it in your playground? <laughs> no, I mean, so I think for me, the favorite memory that I have, and I want to say I was probably between, I don't know, five and eight years old. Mm-hmm. It's hard to, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm 50 now, yeah. so I can't really yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. Playground but, years. Um, sure. You talk about all the different toys and apparatuses that were on a playground. You got the seesaw, mm-hmm. the monkey bars, the merry-go-round, mm-hmm. the little geodesic dome uh yep. the rolling yep. log or balance beams we didn't talk oh, about yeah, balance beams, beams. Oh, yeah. we used to have yeah, yeah. those in the playgrounds and what me and my friends used to do because we were so into competition and sports we used to make up our own obstacle course with all those oh. devices and see who could do them the fastest or two people competing starting at opposite ends or sure it was always just a way to use the equipment differently than when we were yeah. even younger like because when you're first mm-hmm. you know you're younger you use the seesaw all the way you're supposed to use you know, swing up mm-hmm. and down kid throws mm-hmm. you off whatever <laughs> john flings you off the end <laughs> but eventually you want to start doing new things you want to try new things as you're growing yeah. and learning and so for us those new experimental playing sessions were all about obstacle courses sure to this day that's why i love american ninja warrior that mo hates and i love (laughs) uh, spartan race and things of that nature because obstacle courses were uh, it was you against yourself and you against everybody else at the same time Sure, and that was for Mm -hmm. competition junkies like we were that was the best i mean that sounds i mean i told you what you mean because i remember like the seesaws we used to try to run across them like the middle bar that was part of the handle when they they change you got to you know, to handle that, right? You know? Yeah, now yeah. dogs get paid all kinds of money on TV <laughs> to do the thing I invented. There you go. You should have patented, dude. So George turned it into a competition. I was digging in the dirt, and Mo knocked himself out. Yeah, so. I, was getting, some, I was getting minor concussions. <laughs> I didn't have to rub dirt on mine because I was already covered with dirt. It was great. I would come home, my fingers just black. They were just completely oh, yeah. like just, uh, fingernails. I looked like I work in. A, I was a mechanic. You know, was like, my mom be like, "Don't touch anything." Mo comes home with a skull fracture. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I come home with bloody knees or whatever. (laughs) The good old days. Yeah. It was time at the playground as it was supposed to be. Perfect. (laughs) Well, hey, a lot of fun running back, remembering the playgrounds we had in our youth. That is going to wrap it up for this backtrack. Before we leave, though, you know, I like to take a second, usually here at the end, to talk about any newer notable supporters Mm -hmm. we have, whether it's Mm -hmm. on YouTube or over on Patreon. And George, 
Stubaka, your favorite patron. Stubaka. Yeah, I love Stubaka. Just like that. You oh, love yeah. to say his name. He's, He's been a awesome. top tier supporter at that $25 level for a long time now. Sure. However, he just recently upped his contribution. Wait, he's already at the, the top tier. I know. I know. Yeah. He upped it to double. $50. What? 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 Yeah. Money, yeah. money, money, money. <laughs> money. Wow. <laughs> well, you made George's day. Yeah. <laughs> no. That I'm is having crazy. a crazy day until now. <laughs> We've been having a little run of people giving us just little raises for no reason just because they appreciate what we're doing. And wow. Stubaka, again, a great friend of ours. We met him through Gen X yeah, growing yeah, yeah. up. He just really believes in what we're doing. And it was no fanfare. He didn't say anything about it. It just happened. I got the email. Uh, he just wanted to support us more and mm. financially commit wow. to what we're doing. Stubaka, thank you yeah, so, thank you. Holy so much. Thank you. Unbelievable. Your generosity continues to humble us. We appreciate you, of course, and anyone who chooses to support us, whether it be on YouTube or over on Patreon. It really keeps us motivated, keeps gas in the tank, keeps us doing what we're doing so thank you again so very much that is going to wrap it up then for this backtrack uh don't worry we're going to be back in two weeks with another one though and next week is a regular edition of our show until then i am john george thank you so much for being here man yes sir mo you know i appreciate you oh man always fun fourth listener it's you though we all appreciate most of all and we will talk to you next time bye-bye see you guys take care everybody Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. It is time to uh, get dirty, head down to the playground, and remember <laughs> what it was like in the Gen X era. Ramble, ramble. Something else happens here. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. Uh, <laughs> I didn't write anything, so fuck it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try it again. I'm Allison Holland, host of the Kennedy Dynasty podcast. Equipped with a microphone and a long-term fascination of the Kennedy family, I am joined by an incredible cast of experts, friends, and guests to take you on a fun, relaxed, yet informative journey through history and pop culture. From book references to fashion to philanthropy to our modern expectations of the presidency itself, you'll see that there is so much more to Kennedy than just JFK or conspiracy theories. Join me for the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast.